I think we're good. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the beginning of a brand new playthrough here on the Overanalyst channel. I apologize, I know it's a little late, but uh, a meeting I had scheduled for this afternoon ran just a little longer than I was expecting it to. Not a big deal, though. Um, we will be here with you tonight for a few hours of No More Heroes, which, along with its sequel, Desperate Struggle, which you could see there, desperately struggling to install itself, because uh, I don't think my Switch has quite enough free room, or free space, uh, was ported to Switch just uh, a few months ago, in advance of the release of No More Heroes 3, oddly enough, the fourth title in the series, uh, which I'm very, very excited for. Hey, MC, I hope you're doing well, man. Uh... I know it is quite late for you, but at the very least through the VODs, I'm really interested to see what you have to say about this game in particular, because it does some really interesting things with boss design, like from both um, an aesthetic and gameplay perspective. Um, like in SR, No Straight Roads, the fantastic little game that we finished up uh, a couple days ago, which remains my favorite thing we've played together on the channel. I have its entire soundtrack added to my playlist now, like when I'm going around doing housework. Um, this game has a really significant focus on boss battles, and uh, the characterization or definition of areas by the, the nature, by the character of their bosses. So every area is going, including the enemies we fight there, the soundtrack to a lesser extent, definitely the visuals, are all going to kind of conform to the theme of and help establish the character of the bosses we fight at the end of them, which is something I really like about this game. No More Heroes 2 has even better bosses, but doesn't do this to quite the same extent. It's a really interesting game, and I want to take more of a critical, quote-unquote, in-depth approach to this one, because um, there's a lot to pick apart here. Hey, Bunny, welcome to the stream. Uh, now, just a heads up uh, for you, Bunny, because I know the types of games you do and do not like. Uh, the stream title is kind of tongue-in-cheek, but it's also quite an accurate description of this game. There's a lot of pretty much every type of conventionally objectionable content in this game, because it springs to us from the mind of Goichi Suda, or Suda51, a Japanese auteur known for his extremely visceral, usually pretty smartly designed action games. His games are always phenomenally gory and kind of vulgar and dark, but also home to a lot of dark humor and really interesting visual design. So just be forewarned. Um, something else very interesting about this game, this entire series, is we don't play as a villain, per se, but we play as someone explicitly designed to be unlikable. He's crude, he's kind of lazy, he's indolent, he's a lot of unpleasant things. And having that as your starting point for a character who becomes so integral to this story is interesting, I think. This guy, uh, Travis, there, on the, the icon, receives a great deal of character development over the course of No More Heroes through the third title, Travis Strikes Back. And I can't say he ever becomes, like, my idea of a likable character, but he becomes a damn sight more heroic. Yeah, Bunny, that's, that's totally fine. Trust me when I say this is probably... probably the most... um... obscene game I've played on stream? Yeah. But, uh, MC says, so basically you start as the dude in Postal 1 and 2. Yeah, but if instead of edgy, he was just sad? Like, he's, he's living alone with his cat in a motel, and he's just obsessed with, like, magical girl anime, and buys a lightsaber off of eBay so he can make more money working as a professional assassin than he could at, like, a conventional job. He is, he is awful. A running theme in No More Heroes 1, at least, is a lot of the bosses are slightly better people than you and your allies are. Oh god, this is also gonna have motion controls, isn't it? That's alright. That's alright, we could do it. Welcome, Seth, how you doing? And Bunny says, mm, nope, that is just because the last thing I was doing was finishing up a uh, galaxy. Mm. 
Also, kind of off topic, but because I've been in such an NSR mood and listening to the soundtrack over the past couple days, I did not mention every boss fight in that game, with the exception of the DK West, like, special stages, has four um, alternate modes with increasing uh, difficulty. And with that in mind, that they get harder and harder... God above Eve stage on more difficult uh, settings must be an absolute monster because she was one of the easier bosses for us in the main campaign, but if you actually listen to her, her theme, which is hard to do when you're in the middle of a stream, but um, like the soundtrack version... Wait, hold on. We're going to get some, some backstory. Seth says, playing Tokyo Mirage in bed a bit tired. Right on. I know a lot of gamers out there don't online. have much patience. At least that's what Bishop, the dude at the video store, said. So I'm at the register, and then I realize I got no money. I was seriously broke. Why? Because I met this smoking hot chick last night at the deathmatch bar. Man, she smelled good. So being the gentleman I am, I bought her a drink. Anywho, I decided to get a job. The gig? Assassinate the drifter. So I went where I was supposed to and waited for the guy to show up. And there he was. This cat, well-dressed, cool, couldn't tell if he was the shit or just plain all shit. The drifter yeah, is so intentionally modeled on Sephiroth. And pack and heat. Just be, Or at least it was supposed to be. Till she showed up. Her name? Sylvia Crystal, an agent with this Watchamacallit Association. Congratulations. You are certified as the 11th best hitman. How about getting rid of the 10 killers above you and aim for the top? I want to be number one. How's that? Short this is a great intro, enough for you? to be fair. It's going to be a long, hard road. But who knows? Could kick ass. Could be dangerous. Could totally suck. What do you say, bro? Join me. Let's see how far we can take this. And for you there holding the controller right now, just press the A button. Let the bloodshed begin. This game is stylish as all hell. I kind of love it. Bunny says I'm mostly going to be drawing while listening to the stream. Uh, right on. I I've really been enjoying the art you've been posting in the, the channel, by the way. Um, the Duplo sketch looks very nice. Seth says I never played this game. Oh, shoot. I wish I'd gotten an earlier start then and didn't have that meeting. Because I have a feeling you would really like this. Um, and yeah, they break the fourth wall all the time. This is a, an incredibly, um, incredibly uh, tongue-in-cheek game. It never takes itself too seriously. It's made by the same guy who led up development on Killer7, the very unique, like, pseudo-on-rails exploration shooter released for the GameCube that was like a major sleeper hit. Um, he's also worked, not as the director, but in a limited capacity, he and his studio have worked on games like Lollipop Chainsaw, Killer is Dead, Let It Die, um, Shadows of the Damned with EA, which was <laughs> wrought with some really difficult, um, development issues. Seth says the Deadpool of games. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, except Deadpool is fun, and, oh, I love this, the, the difficulty description. You've got, like, the easy difficulty, perfect for beginners, or mild. Many strong men await you. That they do. Um, I know there's this is a lot of preamble before the, the game, but No More Heroes is a game that, from a design perspective, is kind of special to me. Um, and so I want to make sure we're able to dive in and really appreciate everything it does right and wrong, because it does a lot of things wrong. Um, not enough to significantly hamper the experience, with the exception of its female character design, which is just, just bullshit, almost around the uh, around the board, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, Seth says, I like strong men awaiting me. And Bunny says, let, let the bloodshed begin. Sounds like the tagline for Sunshine's secret levels with all the deaths they cause. I... I don't want to say I died on any of them all that much, aside from... Maybe those two or three deaths in the, the lily pad? Like Slalom in Delfino Plaza? That was it. Um, but no, I know their reputation as being very difficult. Anywho, um, sorry, MC, what I was saying to you specifically earlier about um, NSR's soundtrack and how difficult Eve's stage would be 
on higher difficulties where you're supposed to be more reliant on uh, evading and acting in time with the beat is unlike every other track in the game that was used for battle, the tempo of hers, in keeping with its like kind of uh, very, very obscure or kind of... Um, sorry, what's the proper word? Um, it's very esoteric origins. Um, the tempo changes extremely abruptly and often distorts itself in the middle of measures to where her attacks come out then with incredible irregularity compared to what you're used to. So I'm looking forward to revisiting that stage on a higher difficulty and seeing what I do. Bunny says I'm speaking off my own experiences based on my first playthrough. I got you. No, no, that the game does have that reputation. Okay, so the game has a very simple premise. Um, because Travis is both um, desperate for money and also pretty thirsty for Sylvia, we have been recruited by her international assassin... International Assassination Organization or something like that um, to climb the ranks by challenging more experienced assassins to like organization sanctioned duels um, in their home territories, take cutting them down, taking massive prizes uh, in cash and other rewards, and ascending the ranks as we do so. And we actually begin in Medias Res with Travis going after the 10th ranked assassin, Death Metal. NC says, uh, so what you're saying is we only scratch the surface. If we do res, then NSR could have more to say. Yeah, might do, later. I, uh, I have completed DJ Subatomic Supernova's more difficult conventional, um, uh, variants. There's two special variants that require you to damage the boss exclusively by parrying. Haven't done those. Um, and I will say, his fight does get pretty tricky. Ooh, Bunny posted this sketch in Discord. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, Duplis is adorable. That's very cute. Well done. I know a lot of gamers out there. Oh wait, we get the same intro? At least that's what Bishop the dude at the video store said. Uh okay. Normally so I would skip this, I realized, but I don't know I if doing no so money. would also skip the first proper cutscene of the game. Why? Cause I met this smoking hot chick last night at the deathmatch bar. Man, she smelled good. So being the gentleman I am, I bought her a drink. Anywho, I decide to get a job. The gig? Assassinate the Drifter. So female character so design and, and like, show up. not exactly characterization, but just design and dressed, objectification cool. are unfortunately fairly shit. consistent yeah, so he themes fat, in like, um, but pseudo action games. Far less so Until in No More Heroes, Heroes 2, to be fair. Like, name? that's something they really improved Sylvia on. Crystal, um, but Sylvia's, like, sexualized design and characterization, I don't mind because, as we'll see, it plays a pretty significant aspect in her character the development. Above you and aim for the top. I want to be number one. How's that? Short and simple enough for you? It's gonna be a long, hard road. But who knows? Could kick ass. Could be dangerous. Could totally suck. What do you think, bro? This is one of my favorite Paper Mario Let's see characters. How far we can take this. No, he's got a very, very Thanks cute little design. Um, right now. Just press let's the see. Button. Let the blood Who are my favorites begin. in uh, Thousand Year Door? I really like the X Knots and the Smorg. Yep, here we go. So we begin, and our tutorial stage is the first battle, more or less. Travis is leading an assault on, uh... on Death Metal's, uh, luxurious compound. And that sets the tone of the game perfectly. <laughs> Yo, help me out here. Where's this Death Metal dude? Bad answer. That's what I'm talking about. It's game time. Oh yeah, MC, I, I I see what you mean. Like female objectification in anime and related works is something that really bothers me. Um we see more works doing better with that all the time, but hey. Just have to advocate for the change we want to see. And yeah, Seth says female objectification is pretty bad in anime. It is, it is. 
Um, so, a couple things. Something that's particular to No More Heroes 1, and I do hope they bring back in the third game, since it's absent in the second, is every single assassin has totally unique-looking henchmen. Now, they, they all borrow from the same mechanical, like, uh, move sets and uh, sets of equipment, but they have different um, aesthetics depending on their location or their leader. So, Death Metal, or Count Townsend, is an extremely popular and successful English rock star, and so all of his henchmen are like professional security. Seth says, I see how this game is. You definitely love Shadow Warrior, then. I'm gonna get around to playing it. Okay, so we start off with a basic beam katana. We can press the X or Y button to swing it. Let me see. Oh, I see. You use the Y button to deal light attacks, and the... Sorry, the X button to deal light attacks, the Y button to deal heavy attacks. Once an enemy's life runs out, you'll go into death blow mode. Move the right stick in the direction shown by the arrow on the screen. See, on the Wii, we would have to either hold the Wii remote at, I believe, one of two different um, elevations, or it tilted in two different directions to switch between the high and low stance associated with quick and slow attacks, respectively. And we obviously would have to use motion controls for this. I love moving it to the right stick, though. So dig this. Yeah, yeah, and every time we land a death blow, uh, slots will start spinning at the bottom of the screen. We can earn bonuses through them. Don't count on them. What a MC says to be fair, male objection in, object, objectification in anime is equally strong. Not to my knowledge, or maybe certainly not in the subculture surrounding it, but I do get what you're saying. A lot of, like, a lot of stereotyping and objectification occurs, and it's not okay no matter how it is. Oh yeah, we'll also frequently have to recharge our beam katana by doing what in the case of the Wii motion controls mechanics, was basically one gigantic masturbation gag. Observe. We have to recharge the katana, like so. Just watch the motion and imagine doing this with a Wiimote, because they knew what they were doing. There we go, nice and recharged. Continue the tutorial? Uh, sure. It's been ages since I've played No More Heroes. Okay, we can lock on with ZL targeting. And if we're attacked while locking on, we'll block automatically. That's pretty nice. Also, kudos to this, like, professional security agent for just beating us down with a lead pipe. Hold the ZL button and move the right stick uh, to perform an evade. So, like, a roll. With iframes. Nifty. Continue the tutorial? Yes, I want to remember everything about this game I've forgotten. Seth says, Poppy says hi. Oh, hello, Poppy. Need to get some sleep. It's been a long day for a little kitty. Oh, yeah, there's weapon clashes. I love this. Dig it. No, no, wrong, wrong button. No. <laughs> Yep, so we just rotate the right stick, and we can break their guard and immediately open them up for a death blow. If he says, I want to see Brady re recharge his laser saber on a Kinect. <laughs> Joke's on you, the Kinect wouldn't be able to recognize any kind of, like, fine motion. Right, so if somebody's laying prone on the floor, you can also perform a finisher on them. Works for me. That's a pretty situational skill, but good to know. As he says, I know you just be raging at the thing, that's right. Yep, so we want to use our fast attacks to hit enemies guarding their body, and uh, slow attacks to perform enemy- sorry, guarding their heads and slow attacks to perform enemies guarding their bodies. Hey, he's over here. You're a joke. Also, if we land a death blow that will have us striking the weakened enemy with another enemy within reach, we will also damage them with the death blow. It's very finicky, but you can sometimes get two or three enemies in a single death blow. 
Now, it usually won't kill the ones who aren't already weakened, but it will deal a significant amount of damage. Um, Bunny says, did another sketch, I'm on a roll, right on. You are, you're moving very fast. Look at how much more powerful our low slashes are. Also look at how much slower they are. And how much more energy they bring. I have to say, just based off of the tutorial, this ported to switch pretty damn well. Wait, hold up. Continue the tutorial. Uh, sure, but I'm definitely going to have to deal with the camera inversion. Press the A or B button to, like, knock in the, uh... Basically, perform a fist attack or, like, a knee or a kick intended to break the enemy's guard or stun them. And once they're stunned, we can demonstrate one of Travis's greatest passions. Um, we can perform a wrestling finisher on them, which acts as an instant kill in most situations. Or in this case, we can just wipe them out because that's what the tutorial told me to do. When he says that's in the Discord too, and yeah, I move fast when I'm on a roll, you sure do. That's how it here. Oh, one of the digital bob bombs. That's very cute. Right, now we can perform a finisher. Just knock on this guy. And follow up by pressing the knock button again to grab him, and then use both uh, control sticks to suplex them. Observe. This is how you deal most of your damage to bosses. There's no Oh, right. We can also charge our physical blows. Ooh, roundhouse kick. Very nice. We will also unlock more finishers, more wrestling moves throughout the game by various means. Oh, they're actually trying to fight me now. Right on. Seriously, dude could afford this much security, but he couldn't afford proper weapons for them. Seth says, Poppy was observing her shadow, then I used my finger shadow to tickle the shadow of her ear. And Poppy started twitching her ear like she was being tickled. She is so cute. Hey, he's over here! She may as well be the official mascot for the entire stream team. We can, of course, perform uh, charged attacks with our beam katana as well. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, it's like an Aito move. That is so sick. Oh wait, no, no, we're 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 all out of juice. Hold on. And this is like the uh, Ichimonji from Sekiro. This is the Papa Stream Team, yeah! Okay, end of the tutorial. Time to actually mess up Death Metal's um, entourage. Who are fighting us with laser brass knuckles. I love it. And blocking my sword with laser brass knuckles. Oh, I love this friggin' game. Now, in every stage, there's going to be a handful of special collectible trading cards that we can find. I want to say it's 10 per, uh, 10 per stage. We'll have to keep an eye out for breakables, so that... I'm pretty sure they're all, like, in boxes or chests. So we can, uh, collect them and move on. Anyhow, time to explore the second floor of this luxurious mansion. One of the things I really like about No More Heroes, both, uh, 1 and 2, is that, uh, every stage feels and looks totally distinct from the last. Ooh, money. We will definitely be needing that. And now that we're locked in the bathroom, it's time to throw down with some more thugs. By which I mean greatly increase the, uh, the payout from an insurance company somewhere. Now, compared to late game enemies, even enemies in like the mid game, these guys are extremely rare. 
Yes. Some late game enemies can actually survive a lot of punishment. Death Metal's soldiers cannot. I think they're perfectly solid uh, tutorial enemies, though. They really teach you how to work with different types of attackers with different oh, armaments. And some of them do pose a more significant challenge to us. Oh, hello. Let's not forget that little box over there once we can access it. Yes. Rating card? Yeah, there we go. MCS recharge? Uh, no, no, no. Um, you can see our battery gauge over on the right-hand side, and the game's pretty good on giving you, like, battery pickups between, like, major fights. <laughs> Alright, do we have people with actual weaponry now? We do! Katanas! Well, that's, uh, that's better. Oh, I see more of them are going to join the fight as they go. Now, see, I understand that these guys are not part of any evil organization and they're just, like, hired guards. So, at what point, if you're in their place, do you decide... Oh, ouch. Do you decide, yeah, this probably isn't worth it and just turn tail? Now we need to recharge. Oh, shoot. Sorry, I'm having to get reacquainted with the controls. Well, that's all we needed, thank you. You're a joke! Oh, but already got a third schedule. Jesus Christ. Oh, damn. Th this is what can happen in No More Heroes. You can get stunlocked very easily. Which is usually how most enemies and bosses end up destroyed. Oh! We actually unlocked one of our, or we uh, triggered one of our ultimates now that we don't need it. More health, thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's even more of them. Oh, okay. There we are. These throws are the way to go. Now, locking an enemy's attack does absolutely no harm to us aside from draining a little bit of battle. Oh, we triggered it twice? I mean, okay. I'm not gonna complain. I do love those really sweet sounding lightsaber sound effects they managed to get. I am a fan. Now that we've wiped out, like, you know, an entire battalion of security guards, we can now leave the office, which, uh, looks pretty swanky, even though the tiger skin doesn't match any of the rest of the decor. Not even close. Ha! Break the box, get some cash. Trust me, we will need cash in this game. We will need an obscene amount of it, actually. And now head back downstairs. Did we accomplish anything up there? That Not really. Um, but we have now opened up another path uh, to the heart of the mansion, where Death Metal's actually waiting for us. Oh, hello again? Um, okay, so this move allows us to automatically perform finishers um, on just about all enemies, as long as we press the proper sequence of buttons. This is what I imagine it must be like to be Viper. Like, just untouchable, distorted vision. There we go. Now, fair warning, I never have been very good at this game, so we may or may not see quite a few deaths. But, oh! And the barrier, the, the little rope barrier has been removed. Did we miss any trading cards around here? I don't think we did. 
The entire stage is very linear, so I would be surprised if that were the case. Unless they, like, spawn in already uh, cleared areas after the fact, which I don't think they do. Alright, looks like Death Metal's got a ton of guards waiting for us. Looks like we got some health and ammo here in case we need it for health and battery. There we go. Again? Jesus Christ, they're giving me a lot of uh, special. Normally, these two are quite uncommon. There we go. Seems like the katana wielding guards are. Seth says, why did they name him Death Metal? That's my fave genre. Because even though he's modeled very lightly on Keith Richards, apparently, he is like an English uh, metal artist. Oh god! We've got our first beam katana wielding enemy. Oh boy. So these guys can actually mess you up, as you'd imagine. But we can outlast him. Alright. Finally done, Townsend. Now, unless the controls just take me much longer to become acclimated to than I'm expecting, Death Metal himself should be fairly easy. Oh, there's a portrait of him at the far end of the hall. Let's we'll check that out once we get over there. Are there gun-wielding enemies in here? I don't, I don't think so. Now, generally, in a situation where you can... Again? Jesus Christ, this is overkill. I, I would like to actually be able to play the game, Grasshopper, like... At least we're getting plenty of money from this. As you do. Oh, that's... In a situation where you can get away with using power attacks, I would recommend doing so. What? This is the end. This is just getting absurd. You know, Seth says Keith Richards has no connection to death metal, though. Ignorant story writers. I mean, physically. I think uh, a lot of people have said he's, he is very loosely... has loose physical similarities to Keith Richards. I don't know. But, or he could have been a reference for the design team. I, it struck me as weird, too, but... The next boss is basically just Charles Bronson, though, so I can... I can look at that. What? So the, uh, the slot wheels are just completely out of control at this point. Um, there he is, by the way. There's Death Metal. You can actually see his weapon in the portrait, too. What? I did not mean to backflip straight into him. What in the hell? There we go. You gotta really be careful with those rules. And yeah, why not? Seriously, y'all, I've played through entire stages back on the Wii and not received a single slot machine uh, bonus. This is excessive. This is too much. Trading card number three? What? Oh, I guess we did miss one somewhere. Damn it. Oh, well. We don't really get anything significant, I think, for collecting them all, so it's no big deal. Yeah. There's four. Huh. Right around the corner from three. Hey, he's over here! Oh, right. Our first gun-wielding enemies. These guys will mess you up. Even though you can block their bullets. 
at the expense of a great deal of battery energy. So either you block their attacks, yes, sure, why not? Either you block their attacks and incur a great deal of energy drain, um, or you take uh, a tremendous amount of physical damage from them. They're the worst, and I hate them. Hey, Maya, welcome to the stream. I hope you're doing well. Looks like I'm wielding a fluorescent light from a classroom ceiling. Yeah, kind of, actually. What a pain! Some of the uh, more advanced models of Beam Katana actually do look like light fixtures. This is No More Heroes. It is a game that is um, about as obscene as anything I've played on stream. You'll, you'll see. Oh, and we've almost made it to Count Townsend. Every, uh, every chapter on the way to our fight will receive a call from Sylvia detailing the uh, particulars of the fight and reassuring us that we're definitely going to die. Your ranked fight begins just up ahead. Win, and you will be tenth. Lose, and hell awaits. Are you up to this? Need a bathroom break? Whatever you need to do, do it now. Your opponent... Some call him the Holy Sword. He is good, but I know you can take him. You are the man. I am the tiger. He only looks tough because his mother was an ugly bitch. Take it to the red zone. Assassin's way at full throttle. Unleash your power. Show no mercy. Bring me death metal head. Enter when you are prepared to fight. I believe in you and your force. Now, off to the Garden of Madness. Really need to turn subtitles on. I thought they were enabled by default for this game, but they are not. Let's go ahead and turn them suckers on. There we are. I believe this should be the last trading card of the zone, yes. And we can see our arena, or we should be able to see our arena, right through the windows. You know, for a pretty early Wii title, this, uh, this does not look half bad, even with the minimal, like, touch-ups it received. Now, before every boss battle, you'll find a few things. Top up on health. Top up on battery. A special wrestling mask detailing a brand new suplex we can perform, usually to deal greater damage. <clears throat> Travis, do you remember those golden days in Calgary? The path of pro wrestling that you've long forgotten? If even a fragment of the spirit of a wrestler remains in your blood, remember the first suplex that your master taught you. Yes, that's right. The darkness piercing front neck chancery drop. MS. Um, so, all of these little letters and masks are a callback to Suda's earlier game, uh, Killer7, wherein one of the playable characters, or I suppose I should say personalities, was an extremely good hearted luchador named Mask to Smith, who uh, wielded a pair of massive rocket launchers in combat, and was a fan favorite character. So, it's implied that he taught Travis all of his moves. And now, we also get a checkpoint to, like, properly save our game by, of course, using the toilet, because this is a classy game for smart people. Hmm. Also, that's the weirdest design for a bathroom I think I've ever seen. This entire game is just very strange. Um, like, the wrestling moves, most of Travis's backstory, most of the things we see and do, they never get properly explained. It's just a cavalcade of weird stuff stapled together by very good combat. Alright, I think we're ready for this. Let's meet Keith Richards, but like in the wrong genre. Quite beautiful, wouldn't you say? Paid for with the lives of many. When you have the strength to take life for yourself, that is true wealth. 
I am free of desire. So long as I have this scenery to look upon, I need nothing more. Please leave me be. You're the one leaving. In a body bag. And keep in mind, we have nothing against this guy. We're just setting out essentially to murder him in order to advance up the ranks. You obviously don't know me. Obviously, as a professional assassin, he's not necessarily a good guy either, but... Hey, you know what? The, the whole point to a lot of this game's meta-narrative is that a lot of this violence is entirely pointless. Well, you've had your dream, old man. Time to wake up. This is no paradise. All right, then what is it? A place to die. Chat is uh, contemplating the equivalent of uh, saving one's game in real life. Either going to the bathroom so or going to sleep. MC says bathroom no breaks go catastrophically it. wrong. And like Seth, I am I am curious. An old man cry. And quest completion's getting Every paid. I dig that. Shits like you come around from time you want to see a really cool weapon, y'all? Listen well, young one. The wall is high, higher than you will ever know. Check this out. It's basically a neon bloodborne weapon. You can take that to your grave. Whoa! I was about to say, let me see if I could remember how this is done. He's very obvious with his health, thank you. So you want to wait until one of his attacks is completely uh, run its course and then follow up with a sequence of your own. So you'll notice as we're fighting, there's like just this dialogue running, which is basically Travis um, enumerating the extremely materialistic and selfish things he wants to use all of this money for. And whereas Count Townsend has had money and taken success his entire life and it's not fulfilled him. This is how it goes down. And for the old He's a uh, very easy, very simple, and I quite like that for a starter boss, because trust me, the series can get intense later on. Oh, we had him stunned a minute ago, I could have exploited that. And Travis is just rambling. This is this game or this series has near Kingdom Hearts levels of like endearingly pretentious dialogue and like writing. You gotta wait until after that combo to go to town on it, apparently. Battle theme's pretty good, gotta say. Trust me, these get a lot more involved as time goes on. This is just like, kind of a final exam. Do you remember everything that happened in the tutorial? Oh, wait, that, that's got him. Observe. Oh yeah, this can happen now. I totally forgot about this. He does clone himself. It's easy to distinguish the clones, however, because their uh, cleavers aren't shiny. Oh, this'll be nice. Yeah, baby. Whoop, whoop, whoop. We definitely want to get rid of the clones before the old man himself. Their combos are also much simpler. Oh, that was an impressive looking little, I guess, cartwheel kick? Oh. 
There we go, let's get rid of them. There we go. Now it's just us and Count Townsend for the time being. He's uh, not particularly imposing. I think at least in part the context here is supposed to be he's extraordinarily world-weary and isn't really putting his all into this. He's just kind of resigned. Now notice, we're the only one who ever has to recharge our weapon. Most other beam weapon users in the series are totally fine. They just use them indefinitely. I guess their models are superior to ours. Almost there. I think you can stun some bosses even if you're wailing away at their gun. We don't really have the skills for that yet, of course. Oh wait, no, that's got him. And another suplex? That does have him, okay. You should do it! And that's it, our first boss down. A pretty solid starter boss, I dare say. NC says, uh... Let's just say I could be awesomely clumsy. Oh man, so can I. Um, cooking leaves either an extreme mess or none at all, depending on the day. I love cooking, but I am... I use a lot of dishes, we'll put it that way. You're joking, right? Flying rolls being juggled around, oh goodness. I just want to be number one. Seth says, there is no accident involving my rolls. I'm accepted my fate that I'm gonna be picking up toilet paper off the floor. Poppy likes it there. Of course. So... Just a reminder, the intention is for us as an audience, Maya says get that fellow a band-aid, in the sequel there is someone who continues to talk and deliver a full-on soliloquy after they've been decapitated. It's, it's that kind of game. Um, overall we got B ranks, those are, those are alright. Um... A quick reminder, just for, for the audience moving forward in this series, until a certain point in the second game, we are not supposed to like or support Travis. Our protagonist is meant to be deplorable in every sense of the word, or in a very mundane sense. He's just, again, not a good guy. Um. Okay, we'll just, just leave that there. Make sure we grab our heart container to gain some additional vitality. And Sylvia and some representatives of the International Assassins Organization, or Association, should be here. IAA, that's it. It's Association. Nice kill, Travis. I didn't think you had it in you. It was rather... exciting. Congratulations. You are now ranked 10th. 10th, huh? What? Do I get anything? Hmm. The hypersexualized female character design I bemoaned earlier comes into play here. I'm not feeling the sense of accomplishment that I And while this her specifically does have a story purpose that comes up later, it gets much worse from here. So fair warning. And you will keep your promise? There is nothing the association cannot do. And if I refuse as the tenth ranked I appreciate that they're going to all this trouble to clean up Death Metal's corpse, but I guess have just Anytime, left all the anywhere, security guards throughout the mansion. Could be right around the corner, ready to put a knife in your eye. So what you're telling me is that I gotta continue fighting. There's no way out of this. You set me up, bitch. Quit your bitching and get with the program. There's only one road out of here. No turning. Back. Okay, how about this? If I become number one, will you do it with me? Hmm. Emphasis. Maybe. Our protagonist is a pile of just human once. garbage. But he's a tenth ranked pile of human garbage. 
Seth asks, is there a lollipop, ch lollipop chainsaw for PC or Switch? I... I don't know about PC, but certainly not for Switch. I think uh, Shadows of the Damned may have received a PC release, but I don't know for certain. These two games, uh, all three No More Heroes titles that have been released to date, except uh, Desperate... No, not Desperate Struggle. Um, this special re-release of the first game for PS3 with a couple additional bells and whistles are all available on Switch. Killer7 might be on PC or uh, console as well. I want to say PC. So welcome to the motel where Travis lives because he is a functional adult. We will save? Yes, certainly. And prepare for our uh, battle against the next highest ranked uh, assassin, Detective Pastel Branquino, who is my favorite boss in the game. Not exactly mechanically, but aesthetically. Am I ready? Anytime. Gotcha. There are scores of, like, leather jackets and shades and uh, t-shirts that we can collect throughout the game to customize Travis, which is kind of nice, I suppose. Boy. I really want to keep, like, a human garbage moment counter, but I think it would be difficult to maintain. I'm also not certain we can count that high. Oh, we do have a little cat that we can interact with right now. Her name is Jean, and she is the best. Uh, she plays a more significant role in the second game. Uh, what all do we have here? We've got a save function. You can use the TV to uh, watch a couple promotional uh, films or like the intro again. But later on it serves a concrete purpose by allowing us to, um, to learn new wrestling moves, I believe. There's no real purpose in going to the fridge. It just allows us to top off health. We can play with Gene which is incredibly wrong. And yes, Vi, we've got a cat. It's the best thing ever. Um, in the second game, she gains an immense amount of weight for reasons I completely forget. And so you have to play with the cat throughout the game in order to help it get in shape. And uh, we, we can't pet her. Oh no, can we? Yes, we can. As Travis just stares into the void, mortified at the knowledge that he's been forced to do something good. Ah, oh, that's the best. Interactivity. Yeah, alright, that's what we're here for. You can see the uh, trading cards we collect are just of various wrestling, uh, or, um, yeah, pro wrestler masks. Oh, we did get the second one. Look at that. And, uh, there's a lot of them. Like, a lot, a lot. If he says that is not how cats react, and Seth says that's what Poppy does, too. I don't have enough cat experience to say definitively. Um, anything in the closet that would beat this terrible anime shirt we've got on. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I've never noticed that before, but they're, due to the icon on the bedside, Travis might be Catholic? Huh. Yeah, we'll wear the Ninja Killer shirt for now, because that is slightly better. We've gotta wear sunglasses. There's no, like, unequip function, so this is how you know that Travis is a scumbag. You are required to wear sunglasses indoors. No... no choice in the matter. We can access a map of our, uh, our city, Santa Destroy. And see, uh, there's quite a few interesting places for us to visit. Our next, uh, objective will be Destroy Stadium. Which I think we'll head out to right now. Oh, but first I've got to introduce you to the open world. So, they had a lot more planned for this originally, but it got cut due to budgetary or um, time restrictions. Originally, there was uh, supposed to be um, a pretty immersive, content-rich open world that you could cruise around uh, on Travis's bike, the Spieltiger. Um, and we could still ride around on it, there's just not a lot for us to do here. Um, 
there's a lot of collectibles that we can turn in for extra moves and all that, and a few stores you can visit to get um, new uh, cosmetics and moves and the like. Oh, speaking of uh, special collectibles, uh, Lovakov balls. Um, for every ten or so we collect, we can unlock a new move with a special trainer later on. Which, for the record, are all extremely useful. But before any of that, we've got to have another conversation with Sylvia. And here's... Here's where I remember that originally, this stage, or this cutscene, and much of the game's, like, storefronts, would have... Hold on. A doctor? Oh, I love Dr. Peace. Um, there was a really, really catchy J-pop song playing over this, and in most of the game storefronts. It's called Heavenly Star by the Genki Rockets Project. They ran out, uh, the licensing, uh, for it. So it got replaced with either, like, complete silence or generic music. And it's awful, because Heavenly Star was easily the best part of this game at launch. Put me in, coach. All right. Please transfer one hundred and fifty thousand LB dollars. What? One hundred and fifty thousand LBs? Your entry fee, my overhead costs. Don't tell me that you were not expecting so many zeros on that price, or that I am ripping you off or some shit. We have an elite staff in the thousands. Personally, I think it's a bargain. Okay, I gotcha. But you really think I got that kind of dough on me? What the hell am I supposed to do? You are supposed to do your job. You've been hired to kill someone, so just do it and quit your whining. The background well, track they replaced the Heavenly the Star with this time is associated with the second boss of the second game. Agency. But really, they're a raper. I'll tell you where it is later. I'm running late for my facial. Catch up later, okay? What? No! MC says, petting a cat's belly is kind of inappropriate for a cat. They show their belly to show trust, but touching means aggression and tends to make them react aggressively. A weak spot and all. Depending on the cat, they might tolerate it or get accustomed to it, but if you don't know the cat, don't touch the belly. Pretty good life advice in general, I'd say. Um, yeah, so this building is a fairly innocuous-looking um, entertainment agency that actually serves as a uh, kind of a handler for assassination contracts. Which is what we'll be getting from them. My says works for people too. That's right, you don't know the person, don't touch the belly. Even if you do know me, don't don't touch the belly. I am extremely self-conscious about it. Um We can like go dowsing for money in the ground using our beam saber. I don't recall ever doing that to any great success. Real quick, let me take care of that uh camera access issue. What exactly is the issue? I think it's... Is it the Y-axis, or...? Yeah. Ding! Nope, wrong button. I've gotta remember, the Switch Pro Controller is the one where the Confirm button is on the leftmost side. So we want to invert the Y-axis. There we are. By which I mean convert it to an uninverted form. And he says pulls out a very long stick to try and poke Brady over the ocean. Wouldn't your ethernet cable just be able to manage that? <laughs> and yes, Seth, you're were, you were absolutely right. Now we will of course need to take on a contract from uh, K Entertainment, but real quick I want to bring in our ride so we can explore the city block really quickly for money and other goodies. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I am always on the hunt for like the newest trending fashions Whoa. and ain't no better place to find new hip clothes than in dumpsters. That's right, that's where we find a lot of this game's um, collectibles, both money, or sorry, whether it be money or, like, shirts and jackets and all that, ain't no better place to start looking than the trash. This is where we can turn in the Lovakov balls. 
And I'm almost certain I'm mispronouncing that. We can admire these uh, vehicles with textures that look like they're straight out of GTA San Andreas. Because as it turns out, creating an open world when you didn't really have any intended purpose for it and not enough time to complete it, and putting it in your game anyway probably isn't the best idea. Looking around, are there any other dumpsters? Yes, there are. There's always good stuff in dumpsters. Zev says one man's trash is another man's treasure, other man being you, always. Whoa. Whoa. I mean, yes. I didn't like cyberpunk either, so I guess that's got to be somebody else's treasure, but yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, MC says, anyway, this tendency to pet cats the wrong way comes generally from dog owners. I feel like dog owners and, like, dog raising culture in general give people a lot of bad ideas about cats. Mafia says you didn't like the PP Builder game? No. No, I didn't. It was... We released an entire episode of the podcast on it. It was the inaugural episode of our podcast, which you could find right over here if you want to listen to three very, very angry live streamers swear about a bad video game for an hour and a half. Uh, in all honesty, uh, our podcast tackles uh, topics both silly and serious surrounding gaming as a culture and an industry. New episodes release every week. Our most recent episode tackles the phenomenon and development of platformers. Um, and Seth says Poppy was raised by doggos. That's why she likes belly rubs. I could see that, yeah. I think you get the best of both worlds by having a cat that thinks it's a dog. The opposite would be a recipe for just pure chaos. Says the man running around a half-finished city, kicking dumpsters to expand his wardrobe. Also, um, as of this afternoon, I think one of my bosses may check out our podcast, which is, um... Intimidating, but exciting. Oh. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, uh, Moai. Sweet. Hello. Um, no idea why that's there. You can tell you're playing as an elite, well-trained assassin when a very light jog has them, like, raggedly gasping for air. <gasps> yeah. Of course, we earn way more money by completing assassination contracts, but keeping all of this in our back pocket will allow us to buy, like, I don't know, some cool new uh, jackets or something like that after we uh, have enough for Dr. Peace's uh, entry fee. Mechanically, Dr. Peace is probably the simplest boss in the game, but aesthetically, he's far and away my favorite. He is modeled after um, old-school action film heroes, like especially, I believe it was Charles Bronson. Now let's actually play the damn game and run on over to uh, K Entertainment. Bear Hug Film Studio. That's right, Santa Destroy, despite being a rapidly, like, um, shrinking community. Like, rapidly becoming a ghost town that's actually a part of the, uh, the plot in both games. Uh, is home to, among other things, several professional sports teams and a full-on film studio. Hello, Travis. Members only. We need high-ranking assassins. If you don't have an introduction ticket, please leave now. We only offer work to those who have proven themselves as hard workers. May you find you your true path. Um... So this means we actually have to stop in at the local part-time job center and put in some work um, on various odd jobs around the city in the form of different mini-games. This is, uh... This is not as aggravating as it sounds, because some of these mini-games are genuinely uh, a good bit of fun. But it does just scream padding for padding's sake. Whoa, hold up. Job center's over here, never mind. 
As the children say, what the- I did not mean to do that. <laughs> but okay, that's a- That's a pretty solid first look at the Spiel Tiger, I think. <laughs> We'll walk there the first time just to yeah. further expand my dumpster diving crusade. What? So chat, how's everybody doing tonight since we've got some free time? Hope you've all had a wonderful day. Mine was pretty solid, if a little little stressful as we prepare for the beginning of a new semester here. Which reminds me, at some point over the, the weekend, I've got to record and upload like three different Whoa. little lectures for the class that I've been given effective control over. And that's, uh, that's huh? nerve-wracking. Oh. Yes. Well, by the time we unlock... Uh, the Lovikov service, we will probably have enough balls to buy one, uh, one upgrade outright. I says mine was okay until the Indian food I ordered never arrived. What? Seriously? Like, did you, did you get anything? Uh, any notifications from the Dude, delivery service? Whoa. Did they explain why? Or did you pay for this, go out of pocket for it, and nothing ever showed up? Because if the latter... I would uh, contact the service or the restaurant first thing in the morning. Um, Sefsis was talking today with the client for the game I'm making. Oh, right on. Yeah, your, uh, your pro bono project. That sounds really exciting. Um, good folks, I would imagine. Oh man, I could see why they wanted me to ride the damn motorcycle. Don't worry, kids, we will never do this again after crossing the city once. Maya says, the driver said she dropped it off in $19 later, no alu palak, so I complained. As you should, as you should. That is a, that is very strange. Maybe they, like, dropped it off at a neighbor's by accident? I don't know. And Seth says, turns out she's a university teacher passionate about teaching people through video games. Hey, right on. I'm sure we'd have a lot to talk about. Why are you here, Third Raider? This is a place where Third Raiders get together. So, you're a member. Well, I'll teach you some good stuff. All First Raiders in the world were once Third Raiders. So Third Class is the first step up the ladder to First Class. Your life will change if you work here. I'll tell you one more thing. How do Third Raiders become First Raiders? That's easy. They worked their damn butts off till they were puking blood and then worked some more. You want to be a First Raider? If so, just work hard. You chalk up jobs to survive in this town. I'll hook you up with some more work if you do this job well. The job's been posted on the bulletin board. I think there was... something almost coherent to what he was saying, but for the most part it was just, like, nonsense. Which is the norm for grasshopper manufacturer games. And I know, I know guys, I know it sounds like I'm being super harsh on this game, but I actually kind of love these games, in addition to the fact that they're really well made from a gameplay perspective, for a lot of their surreal, often borderline nonsensical world building and uh, narrative structure. Okay, so we start off collecting coconuts. Yeah, all right, we'll earn two grand for each coconut. Man, I would I would work in a tropical area gathering coconuts if that's what they were offering. So now we have to head to the job site. How this dude managed to afford this motorcycle, I have no idea. And you can't really see it from here, but the client is the same exact guy. The unspoken rules of Santa Destroyer are okay, but the coconuts of Santa Destroyer are more my thing. 
Coconuts from these parts fetch a high price. This town is built on coconuts. Coconuts are worth more than human life. Coconuts are God. So gather them now. Oh, no. MC says, assuming you bought the motorcycle. You're right. He could have gathered it off of the drifter. Or from the drifter. Three, oh, man. Okay, two, let's... One. Let's appease the god of coconuts. Oh, god. Damn, coconut fell on us. Which will actually stun you, because this game works like that. Now let's waddle. It's easy. Might as well grab the, the next one from this location. Just gotta hammer the hell out of the A button to bring the That's coconut easy. on over. There we go. Perfect. Two right next to each other, and both uh, on the side of the tree closest to the car. That is awesome. Good, 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 good. Yes, yes, it's take the easy. coconut. Very good. Huh. I know this is not exactly what you were expecting from a game about, like, high-octane assassin battles, and uh, nor was it what I was expecting, but That's easy. this doesn't play terribly. It's padding that, like, doesn't feel like padding, if that makes sense. Come on. Probably gonna want to head to the other side of the cart now. That's easy. Good. We were fortunate to get a couple that each had two coconuts. MC says this is a Yaksa like In terms of its tone, yeah, absolutely. Except Yaksa can do Sirius a whole lot better than No More Heroes can. Um, although, the second game does, ha and the series as a whole, do have a series of particularly poignant statements to make about, like, well... Exactly how glamorous the ultra-violent- oh my god! Lives of video game protagonists actually would be, and how they're not really desirable. Not just video game protagonists, but like action movie stars and the like. And he says another theming, but same gameplay ideas. Like a very similarly structured gameplay loop, you're correct. I, I do not understand why coconuts are so hard to carry, but That's hey. Easy. We're going to get at least 11 of these suckers. That ain't bad, 22k. Which will also then unlock us the um, K Entertainment That's assassination easy. missions, which are where we make the real moolah. And uh, we're gonna need a lot of it, like a lot, a lot of it. Because in addition to everything I've already mentioned, the entry fees, um, cosmetics, Certain services. That's easy. Oh, MC says, because Brady, coconuts are gods. Well, we have assembled a right, proper, nutty pantheon today. <laughs> Gold rank. That's what I'm talking about. I think there's like a platinum rank we can get. But Oh, MC says, carrying the power. That's right. Hey, you third raider, I've got another job for you. Something a little shadier, perhaps. It'd work all the same. My says this reminds me of a study abroad in Costa Rica. In certain places, green street vendors sold green coconuts with the tops cut off and fruit juice and flavorings added into the coconuts. But the, our professor thought the sanitation was dubious, so no coconuts for me. Sounds like something we could try right here at home, though. Possibly not with, like, a perfectly ripe green coconut, but still sounds lovely. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, in addition to everything else, we'll have to pay for brand new beam katanas and upgrades and all of that, and they're very, very, very costly. And yes, the beam katana we're currently using has probably the worst moveset and stats in the entire franchise. They only get better. Alright. 
Chain restaurant Pizza Butt plans to open up in Santa Destroy. To crush their plans, kill Pizza Butt CEO. I want to say originally that was Pizza Bat. So... One of the few revisions they made for subsequent editions, I guess, was just to make this a little bit more juvenile. Whatever. Uh, for finishing off the Pizza Butt CEO, we get 30k. So... May you find the overpart? I'm not gonna complain. Now we have to head on over to the area, I believe it's a parking garage, uh, where the CEO and his men are camped out. Seth says, pizza butt, nice, still better humor than cyberpunk. That's right, that's right. Well, I mean, better intentional humor than cyberpunk, but you can't beat cyberpunk when it comes to unintentional humor. Oh, all right, Seth, good night, enjoy your book. I really need to get back into reading for pleasure, but after a year of quarantine and uh, just grad school in general, looking at, like, written text more often than not just makes me almost psychosomatically fatigued. I'm certain that's going to change once I'm, I'm through with the thesis and or quarantine, whichever comes first, but really taking the damper out of, oh, I'm gonna sit down and read something because I want to. Here we go. I believe we'll be on the clock for this one, so we will have a time limit, but should be able to handle it pretty easily. We have to kill, I believe, just the target. We don't have to cut through all of his, um... His guards. Gotta get him. No, excuse me. Wrong one. Okay, okay. This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm, I'm remembering how I did this mission when I was considerably more advanced uh, through the game. But we'll still be able to pull it out. Oh, or did we want to kill them all? I forget. Are we ranked on time or kills? Maya says this is just reaffirming my weird sense of anxiety in parking garages. Well, I mean, I... Yeah, bronze, that's what I expected. Um, you're very unlikely to be attacked by an absolute loser with a lightsaber in a parking garage, so... At least I, I would hope you are. Hey, Vani, no worries. And by the way, congrats on your, uh... Travis! Very, huh. very healthy, um... First non-IL uh, run time. That, that was looking pretty solid, my friend. And Maya says, honestly, I'd rather be a loser with a lightsaber than a mugger. Well, yeah, I mean... Oh, what? Did... Did you guys see that? That wasn't just me. Like, that, that SUV sunk into the ground for about three frames and then sprang back out? Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, I have a feeling the loser with a lightsaber probably couldn't follow up on mugging you. They would probably just want to show off how cool their lightsaber is. I mean, that's, that's what I would do. The things that the Spieltage can and can't drive, like, just straight through are very strangely, um, categorized. Hello, Travis. 
Bunny says, I'll keep practicing uh, throughout the weekend since I have plenty of time. Not enough time for any percent, but enough for Mama Peach percent. Is that an actual, like, subcategory? Oh, this sounds good. Kill till you die. Reward is 2k per kill. Snake Hall. We can handle that. Okay, buddy, I was about to say, like, uh, considering the very strange categories that some people uh, in speedrunning communities have created for their games, I wouldn't be surprised if it was, though. Oops. Quite interesting going from NSR, which is one of the most universally beautiful games I've played in its its sound, its visuals, its world design, its messaging, to playing this, a very good game that's deliberately kind of kind of grungy. The the contrast in tone is quite striking. Are we are we heading back to the parking garage? And I guess the parking garage is where you go if you just want to throw down in in this world. Bunny says I wish it was that'd be fun. Well, there's probably like a pin up percent or something like that for the midpoint of the game, or could be. Okay, all we gotta do is tear through this entire cohort of uh, security. And we get a fair amount of money for doing so. Three, two, I do appreciate that you have to manually activate your beam katana at the start of every stage. Perfect for the hype. to, uh, just, uh, recharge real quick. Oh god, oh god. We want to wait to pull the beam Tom Wielder to the very last Until after all of his comrades are being dispatched. Oh god, we've already got him. Never mind. Oh, this is good. This is very good. Because we also were able to strike a Venus on a wielder. Shoot. Did we did we get them all? Yeah! Bunny says I would love that, but as far as I know it is an actual category. I made it myself so that I'd have something longer than individual levels or worlds, but not as daunting as any percent. Plus I get rewarded by my favorite cutscene at the end. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. Gold medal. Huh. And I know Pinna Park is an individual world, but Pinna Park levels are generally very hard, and I don't want to do just Pinna. And MC says a true speedrunner is not afraid of difficulty. Um, my issue with Pinna Park, just as a player, is it seemed to have more more padding than any other stage in the game, aside from uh, aside from Pianta Village, which you can tell was rushed like you wouldn't believe. But okay, we have more than enough. Uh, cash to allow us entry to Dr. Peace's rather unique stage, but first things first, I want to stop by the local boutique and see if we can't get ourselves a better looking jacket. Because I'm vain, you see. And since I wear, like, black um, athletic wear nearly every day since the onset of quarantine, I need to style vicariously through my avatars. And yes, to, to MC's point, he is absolutely not averse to difficulty. But, to each their own, absolutely. Um, some people don't 
like diving headlong into challenges that they don't feel prepared for. I'm somewhere in the middle, I think. I'm willing to try most things, but if I get a ton of pushback, I'd much rather uh, take the time to prepare. I believe this is our... Oh no, that's the ATM. Never mind. But we do have to deposit everything here to uh, unlock Dr. Peace's deal. But hold on then, what's this This blue imp? No, that's the, the stage. Never mind. Sorry, getting confused. Can we not access the boutique yet? We may not be able to. Or wait, now that we've got the uh, entry fee, we have to go back to the motel. Because, of course. And we'll receive the details of our, our showdown. Bunny says, I'm laying the general base down so that one day I'll be ready for any percent when I finally have the time. Yeah, and MC says it's a source of pride somewhat that I never saw the normal difficulty in the Metro series. I never play... It, unless, like, it's a specific request somebody has. I never play anything on a difficulty other than normal. Nothing higher, nothing lower. I like to experience games as uh, developers intend them for their, their players. Now, there are these odd situations where games... Uh, or devs make games with... Difficulty balance that skews towards the extreme, and so they'll say, Oh, hard is how we intend you to play this game, or nightmare, or what have you. And I've played those games under those circumstances, when the developers explicitly state that they would prefer, or they intended players to tackle them in a different way. Um, but usually I just want to experience it how devs wish me to. MC says, always headed straight in with the max survival difficulty with no overlay. Oh, I don't know if I could do that, man. Now let's see, are any of these t-shirts worth it? Yeah, that doesn't look half bad. It also doesn't look half good. I like this horrifying deer head trophy uh, t-shirt. Um, we'll go with, we will go with this, why not? Now, real quick, let's let's pet the cat once more, because I, I know what my audience wants. Aww. <coughs> that is just adorable and wholesome, which is something No More Heroes definitely needs. Bunny says speedrunning is basically Mario Sunshine on extreme hard mode. The game is already challenging, but learning the strats and getting them right is even harder at times. Yep, it's all about timing and occasionally luck. I says, oh yeah, that's the good stuff. She also has a bow, she does. Jean is amazing. Um, and her tubby model from the second game, even more so. She is just the most precious little thing. Uh, Bunny says, I'm gonna take up the challenge for sure, but I need to prepare myself, practice, uh, make sure I'm ready. Of course. And yeah, I agree with MC. You definitely can. If anybody can learn Mario Sunshine to a a ridiculous amount of, like, detail, it would be you. MC says survival difficulty is a variant of Ranger where there are fewer bullets. Okay. So, like, not only moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, but, like, just gathering resources and things like that is made more difficult. That sounds kind of interesting, like, combining hard modes from a conventional shooter, and one of those survival games that everybody loved so much a few years ago. In one. And yes, our, uh... Our destination is Destroy Stadium. Which Dr. Peace, as the individual being challenged, uh, selected as his venue for a very special reason. And yes, that's the way it works. When we collect, uh, or when we provide that significant fee to Sylvia, at least, uh, as far as we're aware, all of it goes to the individual we're challenging so that they can, like, experience anything they want to before what could ostensibly be their final days, and also arrange for a battleground, a venue of their choice. Yes. There we go, we now have enough Lovikov balls for um, a special move once we unlock the best way to use them. 
Bunny says, of course, I'm absolutely committed to it. I know I'll get there one day. Never gave up hope for the second. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, trust me, we, we know you can do it. If I, with my almost universal distaste for most of the work I've been doing since the pandemic hit, can manage to get that master's degree and become a professional educator, you can do that. Trust me. Oh, ran over somebody again. It happens. Oh, thank you, Bunny. I appreciate that. MC says, I'm overall averse to being nice. Not in my experience, man. You've been downright saintly to me and the, the rest of our community. Alright, you ready for a really cool villain intro? This is done for all of the assassins ranked 9 through 1. Listen to my songs. This extremely stylized intro became something of a meme in some circles online. So... Any guesses as to who Dr. Peace's minions are going to be, y'all? Anybody have any good ideas? I will tell you right now, starting in stage two, we just completely jumped the shark. Maya says the Peace Corps. No, even better. It's just the local baseball team. No affiliation. No reason. We, we just have to fight our way through the entire team. MC says a fat guy in front of a TV. No, 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 no. I'm playing the game. Uh, all right, Bunny. Good luck with your practice. I appreciate the fact that their bats can hold against my, my laser sword. They should be proud. What? There we go. Now I'm remembering the best way to do this. Form a uh, combo of regular attacks on them. Finish, usually. With um, a sponge, so you can become one of those lovely little uh, suplexes. Or, you know, just do this. Is that the way forward? Or Yeah, I think it might be. We want to make sure we get all of our trading cards first. And yes, there's one right over here. Oh! Got a flash right away. And instead of guns, several of these enemies will attack us with baseballs, which is a nice little touch, I think. So at this point, we're, uh, we're not only cutting through a horde of, like, high-powered henchmen, we're also destroying an integral part of the city's economy. Are you messing with me? Something about the lock-on is kind of weird. It, it totally glitches out whenever I perform a backwards dodge. Um, and so instead of sending me rolling away, it sends me straight into, uh, or towards the enemy. That does not happen for sideways rolls, however, or for the most part. Very strong. Alright, this should be enough for him. No? There we go. Just absolutely rush them down. Oh, and that opens up um, a portal to the next floor, which we wouldn't have been able to access beforehand, the port colors just would have been, uh, closed. So we had to come over here anyway. Nice. Don't expect our time for this stage to be phenomenal. And unlike NSR, we cannot replay boss battles. Not that it really matters. There are a couple set pieces in here, at least one of which is really good. 
Oh, ton of money. Very good. We need that. Believe you me. So the gameplay is simple on the whole, but I will tell you it feels incredibly satisfying. Oh, here we go. Oh, some of these guys just straight up got hatchets. <laughs> Never noticed that before. I thought they all were the baseball bats at this stage, but. Makes no mechanical difference, really. Oh, just in time to fight the lightsaber wielder. Good. Is he asked, what's my most hated baseball team? Don't really have one. I, uh, I don't follow sports all that closely, but when I do, I'm not usually a big, like, team guy, you know? I'm not a hardcore fanatic for this faction or that. I just like seeing really good, usually pretty close games between teams of similar skill level. Which makes me the strangest spectator or sports fan in a crowd, believe you me. And am I imagining them right now? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I am imagining our first set piece, which is amazing. Dig this. So instead of having to fight through a corridor full of soldiers, uh, or guards, we get a much cooler opportunity. It's a nice little home run derby. I love this. I'm also not very good at it, so... Okay, that's two of them down. Just three? Huh. Gotta wait till it's a little closer, I think. Oh, damn it! Okay. Well, that's unfortunate, but we can just finish off the, the remainder. If you hit it just right, it will not only take out all the guards, but also the portcullis in the far end of the hall. We get another opportunity to do this later on. Yeah, that's right. MC says, to be fair, I appreciate the effort people put to their sports, but the success is theirs, not the fans. I respect the players and not the fans. Right on. Well, I mean, some fan communities are lovely on their own merit, but you're right in saying that they have nothing to do with their, their teams directly. Unless, you know, they, they donate or what have you. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's make sure we get all that money. <laughs> and top off our resources, because why not? Yes. We can greatly increase our pool of moves and things like that as we go on through the game. Hey, get out here! Oh, yeah, yeah, right. MC says I meant more in general to people claiming they won with a beer in front of their TV. Hey, right, I know exactly what you mean. Yes. I gotta appreciate uh, his buddy just doing the running man as we fought through that first class. Strawberry on the short tank! Alright, I think we may be nearing the next set piece, which is just another home run derby. Nope, gotta do a little bit more leg work. That's fine. Compared to Death hey, Metal's Dr. Pizza's here. stage is pretty short, and unfortunately not that varied in its visuals, but I mean, I understand why it's not. We're working our way through the utility models of, like, a Coliseum, and this is exactly what they look like. Well, you just 
assuming there's probably be more team propaganda around, but you know what I mean. Let's try this again. May or may not get it, but it's totally fine. I think all we miss out on is maybe a little extra money. Yep. We got it. Thank you, thank you. Ah, oh, damn. Huh. Come on. Man. I... I swung too early every time I actually made contact with the ball. I'm fairly certain that's what was going wrong. You can see what I mean about the benefit of catching multiple enemies with a single finisher. In the case of, like, standard, uh, standard guards, it will absolutely destroy them. Alternate between light and heavy attacks is also extremely easy and the tag team Taco Twins? That sounds like a phenomenal name from the kiosk. I would be there. Moctezuma and Montezuma. Two different ways of saying the same exact name, I believe. As the end of the story, I really should know that. I'm fairly certain it's two ways to say the same person's name. You're a joke! Cranberry chocolate sundae! As like a professional otaku, Travis has named all of his special moves and they all have absolutely ridiculous monikers. Hey, at least we were able to take out the beam with the wielder. Only to go, go. I'm sorry, was that gentleman just, like, fighting off, staving off my bean katana yes. with a baseball? <laughs> That's amazing. Bringing a whole new meaning to fighting baseball. Bunny says, I just realized something after practicing uh, an individual level. Like a couple months or so before my sunshine obsession truly peaked, I still liked the game, didn't play it often though. What, really? There was such a time? <laughs> I had about five hours in 3D All-Stars and now I have 50 more. That's within the course of very early 2021 when I started watching Twitch streams. Oh god, Brady, stop reading chat. Ah, you're still in game. So I'm just realizing I picked Sunshine back up and didn't put it down, and here I am, 55 hours. Yeah, that is that is a lot of dedication. Once you break an enemy's guard with uh, those types of attacks, then they'll be totally open if you decide to switch it up. What a pain! Uh, this is the end! I got got oh no, well I say that, and that guy maintained his guard pretty well. Uh, uh, what I like about several of these more advanced suplexes is they end with an automatic finisher, such as the beam katana just falling on the enemy. Uh, Bunny says, yeah, there was such a time when I didn't play Sunshine very often. When I first started playing, I was actually rather unimpressed with it. Wow. Until I really started getting into it. I had a similar experience with Witcher 3, so I know what you're talking about. Oh, I totally forgot about that. If you perform a picture perfect dodge uh, during an enemy's uh, combo, you'll be able to slide around them. Let me see if I can remember how. Well, I will. If I can't figure it out, I will look it up before the next, uh, 
for the next chapter because we're really gonna need to know that. And she says, sounds like a relationship. You need to really, really get to know the person to truly fall in love. Right, you are. But this is a game and it cannot reciprocate. Also true. Goodness gracious, this guy's been going to going to some classes, hasn't he? Most impressive string of blows we've seen from a common enemy yet. Not like it mattered in the end. Tenth trading card, there we go. And we should have unlocked, yeah, the Doctor's Atrium. So unless you miss, just in case you missed Sylvia's uh, commentary from earlier, uh, Pastel Branchino, Dr. Peace, is a corrupt uh, detective who made his living as, like, a, an envoy between crime syndicates and the black market and the cops. The fight begins. If you win, you will be ranked ninth. If you lose, well, there's no need to go into that. Need to pop a breath mint? Hit the restroom? Brush your teeth? When you are ready... Step inside. To be honest, your chances of survival are slim. But trust your force. And head for the Garden of Madness. Not entirely sure why you'd want to brush your teeth before something like this, but alright. Bunny says, I didn't start truly getting into it until 3D All-Stars was announced. Had this collection not been a thing, I wouldn't have gotten back into it and probably dropped and forgotten about it altogether. Sure. Oh, wow. Sure. Well, I mean, I'm glad I was able to revisit it and uh, Mario 64. Well, really, all three titles uh, with you guys on stream. So I'm quite thankful for the collection. <clears throat> Travis, you've made some progress. I caught the podcast that said you're getting your edge back. You remember your second suplex? A terrifying trip to the moon. The reverse arm salt. Yes, indeed. And this is going to be instrumental in taking down Dr. Peace, because he is especially vulnerable to suplexes. <sighs> That's right, Bunny, I wouldn't have met you, and honestly, we're at... I wouldn't have met quite a few of our friends. We gained quite a few followers from that uh, stream series, which is something I'm quite proud of. Right, so are y'all ready to see why Dr. Peace is probably my favorite? I mean, yes, mechanically, he's very different from a lot of other bosses in the series and does some interesting things, but it's all about this intro. Listen, if you will. You can hear him just under the, the soundtrack. So why did he want to meet in the stadium? Well, dude's got style. He's also a very experienced singer. Nice set of pipes you got there, old man. It has always been my dream to perform in a stadium such as this. A gentleman from the association told me I could have any stage I wanted today. How could I refuse such a kind offer? <laughs> Courtesy of me and my entry fee, no doubt. <laughs> my ex-wife called me the other day and I met my daughter for the first time in ten years. We dined at a fancy restaurant, one of those that are impossible to get a reservation for. Got an amazing that voice actor. Karaoke. Who got you the reservation? The association took care of it, of course. Fuck. My entry fee. What's important is not the fact the reservations are hard to get. In fact, no one gets reservations. 
The words reservations only apply only to those outside of the circle. It's getting into that circle that matters. And the food, good? Unfortunately, the atmosphere was a facade. Not once did my own daughter look me in the eye. Oh, the food tasted like blood. You're a junkie for blood, old man. Sadly, I can't. What's interesting is that There's while death metal was build. just completely People jaded, like we're sharks attracted to blood. The implication it's here is Doctor Peace genuinely it's dislikes the kind of person he's become. You got it, old man. And for some reason, I feel this sense of euphoria. Don't die on me too quickly. I want to gorge myself on this sense of He has two gorgeous-looking golden revolvers. And yeah, as you'd expect, this is what he doesn't fight for, us directly. Fighting your own kind. He's Nothing going to stand on the gratifying. pitcher's mound and try to keep us at range. See you on the other side. Which is pretty easy for him, given that he can do this. Oh. Yep. So, we've got an interesting battle against a very stylish opponent here. Now, Dr. Peace is still far and away- Oh, shit, the clock's ticking. Uh, sorry, gotta- gotta fight and talk. Far and away the easiest boss in the game, because if you get close enough, lock onto him, and dodge his shots, just run around until he fires a charged shot, like so, and then charge the mound and open a can on you. And he cannot do much to, to stop you. This is a great deal of the fight, to be honest. What I appreciate about the mechanics of this fight is that um, he isn't based around a relentless physical assault like most of the bosses in the first game are. Um, it's easy, but it is something different. <clears throat> I don't particularly love that all of the boss themes in this game are variations of, like, traditional hard rock. I feel like they could have made uh, the boss tracks a little bit more personality-laden to suit these larger-than-life uh, characters they're associated with, like NSR did. But, I mean, what we've got is still pretty good. Dr. Peace is uh, not exactly the best at correcting course once he starts firing. I still think this is a better fight than Death Metal because unless you're focused entirely on dodging, he can eviscerate your health and battery very quickly. Like, if one of those connects, you are in serious trouble. Oh, he actually managed to quick step. And stunned him. And get to perform our third suplex on this poor old man. But notice, with the exception of the explosive bullets, we can block all of his attacks, effortlessly. This is a fight that's more about atmosphere than it is about difficulty, and I can definitely respect that. Because the ambiance here is just breathtaking. You know what time it is. Oh, but he's not done. He's got one special trick lined up for us. Don't kid yourself. We're gonna have to charge the mound one last time. It's over.
One of the few really appropriate uses of a QTE I've seen is for the quick draw there. Next song I sing, I know my daughter will love. Won't you, darling? <coughs> Better practice my rap. <laughs> rap with me, Jennifer. Uh. It's open mic night in hell, old man. Sing all you want down there. It's going to become more obvious with a lot of the assassins we face, and especially in the second game, but not all of these are horrible people. Some of them are actually quite decent by the game standards. MC says, speaking of NSR, um, I identified the word that I would use for 1010 and Tatiana as bosses. Static. Yeah, and the other boss fights are far more dynamic. They are. With every phase... Uh, I talked about this during the uh, in credit scroll. Every phase of those fights, and it's what so enamored, um, enamored me with them, involved a complete and total aesthetic and mechanical shift, like the boss and usually the arena would look different, the soundtrack would intensify or change entirely, um, and the mechanics would be completely different for that next phase of the fight. Uh, now, 1010 did change up their mechanics with every phase, but the aesthetics of both the fight and, I believe, largely the track remained pretty consistent. Tatiana, on the other hand, hardly changed at all. Um, and there's speculation online as to whether this was because they were running out of money, time, or both. I think both are likely. Um, but she, in particular, was very, very underwhelming for me. But I... I am super hopeful for all of the projects that Metronomic Studio works on in the future, especially if they pursue a similar mold, because that team, that team knows how to do a friggin' boss fight, and that is one of the hardest things to do really properly in a game. Um, Maya says, I can only hope my last words are as cool as rap with me, Jennifer. I, yeah, yeah, they, it came out of nowhere, but doodad style. Like, aesthetically, too. I love the wardrobe. I love the revolvers. Shit. Shit. Let's, uh, let's... Shit. If I can hit the box, let's hit the box. There we go. Yes. So, yes, in conclusion, I like the Dr. Peace fight quite a lot. I think it's a pretty marked improvement over Death Metal. And if some of you guys are worried that, oh, well, that was quite easy, don't worry. The next assassin more than makes up for it because uh, they enjoy reputation. Is probably the hardest fight in the you entire game. Are now ranked number nine. What'd you expect? Wait a minute. Are you getting a little sentimental? Still green, aren't you? You know this is only the beginning. Call me when the next one's arranged. Game set! Wrong sport. <laughs> if he says my final words will be a story starts before ending, I hope. Hey, Pot, welcome. Thank you so much for the stream. I hope you had a good one, man, and I hope you guys are doing well. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to tonight's stream of No More Heroes. Good evening, Lady Underjoy. A pleasure to see you, ma'am. Um, man, just install me, like, like, upload me to the cloud. Let me live on in some kind of digital form. Stick me in a vending machine. I don't care. I just want eternal life. Pot says, let's see what you have for us. I have, a. Uh, well, this is a lovely site to enter a stream on. I have one of the more eccentric action games of the past ten years. And by eccentric, I mean compelling despite its flaws. And uh, since we're talking about boss fights, MC, as a, as a designer, what are your opinions on the two we've seen so far? Hi, this is Diane from Beathead Videos. This is a message for Mr. Travis Touchdown. Just calling to remind you that you haven't returned one of our rentals. Let's see here. It's um, titled Big German Jugs Collection Number 23. Be sure to return it soon. Just Have your... Uh... Your regular reminder that Travis is a deplorable human being. Mr. Touchdown. Your registration for the ninth UAA rank is now complete. Thank you very much for your cooperation. In addition, we have faxed you some information about the rankings in case you wish to... Oh yeah, MC, we're about to enter a real cyberpunk world. <laughs> reminder, 
There will be a small nominal fee to participate in ranked fights. Pot says typical Brady thing to rent out. Oh, come now. Um, real quick, can we, uh, can we take the moment to appreciate Jean, like, swinging around on the fan by a toy she's got in her mouth? Okay, we need 200k for the next one. This is your wholesome sight for the day. They're simple, but they work. And, uh, some later fights become a little bit more complex. There's no, like, phenomenally cool multi-phasers like in NSR in this game, but what we do have are some really solid, like, stand-up bare-knuckle brawls. Maya says Jean could be an assassin too, killing folks with cuteness. Yes, she could! We've unlocked Thunder Ryu's gym, uh, Dr. Naomi's workshop, uh, the boutique, and a new part-time job. Yay! So many things. I love all these things. It's so good when you have things to do to distract you from the things you want to do. Um, how much money do we have? Uh, about 220k. Uh, I think first we're gonna go see Dr. Naomi. And uh, I hope you remembered what I said about female objectification, because for reference, Dr. Naomi is of extremely advanced age. She's, um... I want to say in her 70s? Uh, normally I wouldn't tell you something like this as, like, foreshadowing, but, but you, uh... You guys just need to see this, and you'll ex understand why I have something of a problem with this game's character design. MC Whoa. says we might argue that the bosses are a little too spongy, yes. but otherwise perfectly fine and suited for this game. Yeah, exactly. Um... And Dr. Peace is about as fragile as they get. I can think of one or two others who have way less health, but also have propensity for dodging attacks. Whoa. So it kind of evens yes. out. Dr. Naomi is our go-to uh, for upgrading and replacing our beam oh, katanas. It's you again. A 70 or 80-something year old woman just for the record. Um, she will sell us our next beam katana, the Subaki, which I believe is just a straight-up upgrade, so I'm going to purchase it. Yeah, right on. She also sells parts or modifications for it. Um, accelerator. A sensor that can locate buried treasure when attached. Right on, we can use it for dowsing. Yeah, go ahead. Maya says, sexy grand nana, oh baby. Um... It's never mentioned in lore, uh, or it's never mentioned in-game, but her sister, who is equally youthful but actually has a sensible character design, um, is kind of sort of the main villain of the third game. Yeah. I asked what moisturizer does she use? Uh, she's a, like, machinist, so I can only imagine she's some sort of cyborg. Or this is no more hero's logic, meaning we don't need logic. Pot says I wouldn't mind to be her young stud. Oh dear. At least the dumpsters have plenty of trash for us to help us make up what we just blew at, like, uh, Dr. Naomi's lab. But we're also going to have to blow some money at the gym, and the video store, and the boutique, because I'm getting really tired of this jacket. Oh wait, no, the video store isn't open. Damn it. Um, we'll just have to blow some money at the, uh, boutique, and the gym, then. The gym is where we can receive lessons from Thunder Ryu, a, uh, legendary, I want to say, former luchador and Yakuza member, who serves as Travis's mentor and taught him most of what he knows about actual, like, uh, hand-to-hand -hand combat. So I do appreciate that there's at least a reason provided in-universe as to why Travis can fight at all. I mean, I, I talk as though I didn't just play a game where a nine-year-old, who appears to be about two feet tall, uh, was one of the most formidable opponents, so... Why is this these poor palm trees? Yeah! 
Yeah, but they fall over like they're made of wood, so I, I like to imagine that the entire town of Santa Destroy is just some kind of desolate, vacant back lot inhabited by a bunch of actors in Travis who doesn't even know that none of this is real. Um, and Pot says, the fuck is that bike? This is the Spiel Tiger. It's, uh, it's really cool, I have to say. Travis is not my favorite character in the world, but all of his gear is really, really cool looking. Come on in, brother. Take a good look around. Uh, okay. So sunglasses, what do we want? Red tint? Or orange, I suppose? Purple! Oh, man. You you guys know me in purple. Jacket, what do we have? We've got, like, black with a skull design, or, like, just a straight-up leather number. I, I think we'll go for the leather. I quite like that. Maya says, I mean, aren't they made of wood as trees? Shit, I'm sorry, Maya. This is... <laughs> Hold on. I'm just going to take a moment to appreciate the fact that I said they probably aren't real trees, they're made of wood. Oh my god. Oh my god, we are deep into quarantine, <laughs> y'all. That's the moment of the stream right there. Ah! Y'all might want to clip that. It's he says, what is cardboard? I'm... You know what? Somewhere, the insane clown posse are just laughing their asses off. Like, yeah, not so crazy now, are we? Maya says, cardboard's thick paper. Thick now, brother. To be fair, it has been a very long time since I've seen a tree, so... I don't know, maybe they came out with a new model. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> uh, Y'all ever wonder what's wrong with the American education system? Just remember, I'm trusted to be a part of it. Mine says water and wind in the friggin' hood. <laughs> Fucking trees are they made of wood? <laughs> <laughs> and MC says, so I suppose we're now talking on co with cardboard Brady on stream, the other would have run away from shame. No, see, because he doesn't know what cardboard is. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. Let's see if we can afford some lessons. Uh... We can undergo training sessions with Thunder Ryu. You want that, right? Um, after enduring his extremely suggestive dialogue. Charming. He is a legitimate trainer, however. Um, we can speak to him to increase our stats overall. Dumbbell training. Expen extend our beam katana combo attacks. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Gotta move quickly. Admittedly, Travis is pretty strong if he can move that much weight, albeit with god-awful form, this quickly. There should not be anywhere near that much movement of the lower body nor of the back. This is... Come on, Thunder Ryu. Or, are you too busy with innuendo to ensure that your students train properly? Mm. Disappointing. But that was a quick and easy upgrade. Now for 1k more, we can use the bench press to increase our strength, so just our damage potential. And we will have the opportunity to come back to Thunder Ryu's and train following every single battle. Or ranking battle, I should say. 
Just got a button mash here. Notice uh, the background music is as close as they could legally get to Eye of the Tiger on a budget. MC says Dark Souls does not have this. That's right, no, so ergo this game is better? Like imagine if there was a train- yeah, MC says Dark Souls is thus bad. Like imagine if there was a training montage after you gathered every fragment of the Lord Souls in the first game. Like Punch-Out style. Squat to increase our health, right on. Oh, Travis, my man, that form is awful. Uh, well, maybe. Maybe. Are his knees going past his feet? Or his toes? I think they are. If he says, also, this game lacks snowboard. Does it? Yes. Yes, this game does. I'm, uh, I'm not angry about that in the least. Pot says Seth's wide squats. No, her form is proper, despite the fact that she uses a pretty wide stance. Um, Travis was just barely... Yeah, Maya says he's doing the old upright rowboat. He was doing something that may resemble exercise to nobody who's ever done proper exercise, which, again, fits the character. Let me just uh, get the bike out of the trash, and then we can go take on a new uh, part-time job to unlock more assassination missions, which will get us the money we now need to challenge the third-ranked assassin, who, again, has a reputation as being the most difficult in the entire game. Barring maybe the final boss in some people's estimation, but no, no, I would put this one at the top. It's quite impressive, like... Putting someone so dangerous so early on in the game. Not due to poor balance either, it's just the way the fight's designed. Whoops. Whoops, we uh, we missed the job center entirely. <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting that. But back back to the uh, back to the motel. I've never done that before. Oh no. Oh Travis, baby, no. All right, let's try this again. Come here, you old wood-ass bastards. Okay, so we can run through certain metal structures, just not others. Piece of shit. Yes, we are now just taking revenge on inanimate wood for me not recognizing it for what it was. This is a uh, this is the content you guys like, right? <laughs> this is a uh, this is what y'all are here for. It's a very large like kind of almost unmanageably sprawling city. For one that's lacking a lot of content. MC says, God damn, wood structures should have burned it all a long time ago. Oh, wait till we get to the second game. Wasn't that guy walking along holding his back uh, using the same right. model as one of the guys that we ran over earlier? Right, so today's job is, uh, lawn mowing. Alright. We can, we could do that. Are we going to meet, like, the, the god of lawns? MCS, so you never watched Firefly? I have not. Um, I've seen the first episode. And I could, oh, Gorum. I see. Uh, I have not seen, um, anything beyond that. I can definitely see why people really, really like it. It's just not 
for me. Like, I wouldn't be opposed to watching the rest of it. It's just not something that I would, at the same time, seek out. Here we go. Lawn mowing is an easy way to make a relatively large amount of money. From uh, an optional job, anyway. The assassination missions will always pay more, but this is a good way to earn a little bit of cash on the cheap. Izzy says I could not stand the first episode. I just personally like my sci-fi to have exotic worlds and alien species and... Sweet. Things of that nature. As he says, I gave the series another go a couple years later and loved it. Okay, well, I may try it out. I mean, God knows we got the time. Anything at the bus depot? Yeah, Lovikov ball. Here we go. Yes. And we picked, I think, a new shirt out of the trash. Yes, we did. And it looks... Eh, eh, eh. Acceptable. That looks like a uh, copyright skirting version of... Is it maybe the Guinness label? I don't know. Hey, freaky job center guy. There are dreams in the unspoken rules of Santa Destroy. A verdant lawn awaits you in your future. A maze-like manor house with a huge pool and a brilliant green lawn. Just as the god of handwork awaits at the end of a long day's work, the god of lawn shall smile upon all who mow them. Cut, 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 and mow. Sure. Yeah, why not? I'm... I'm willing to do that to myself. Definitely. <clears throat> Lawn mow and start. Let's do it. All we've got to do is use these weird tank controls to mow the entire little enclosure here. We can put a little English on this sucker to turn more quickly. MC, now that you brought it up earlier, the, the side jobs definitely do remind me of Yaksa, and in a very good way. Like, it's this intentional, like, tonal dissonance introduced to the game, in order to not only help the main plot breathe, but also provide, a uh, just a little bit of levity that can only really be introduced in a setting like this by acknowledging that, hey, yes, we know, we are a video game. Although, if things like lawn mowing and coconut collecting pay so well in this universe, wouldn't it actually be more work to be, like, a hired killer relative to, like, what you're making? We won't be able to get, like, every strand of grass, probably, but we can clear out the largest patches and get us a fair few acres. And remember, we're being paid 300 apiece. Well, we, we're almost about to get the entire lawn. I'd imagine it's 100 acres in total. Oh, come on, Travis. Oh. Not gonna make it, but that's alright. Or, wait. Hey, welcome, Eclipse. Glad to see you, man. Hope you've had a good day. MC says, since you love good characters, uh, the show does a good job at them. Alright, I'll be sure to check it out then at some point. This is gonna be a very busy semester, but I will. And Maya says, I love that the grass cutting sound vaguely reminds me of the munching noise that the ticket eating machine made at Chuck E. Cheese's when I was a kid. Yes, it does! Yeah, the old, not just the ticket taking machines, it reminds me of the sound that ticket dispensers would make as they fired out each little slip. Eclipse says, mowing the lawn, gotta make some cash somehow. Assassining is a less lucrative business than we imagine. No, see, we do the part-time jobs to unlock assassination missions because that's how it works in this stupid city for some reason. 
Also, I like that now that we've gotten the Subaki, we're just straight up carrying around a, like, Star Wars prequel tr trilogy lightsaber on our, our belt loop. It's amazing. We've got two more missions. Kill use only res using uh, wrestling moves only at the stadium. That is fair. And MC says, well, Grass was assassinated. That's true. That's very true. A grave crime, gotta get, dig deep for it. <laughs> and Eclipse says, you mowed a lawn super fast? Sweet, you got the skills to go kill someone. Well, we needed to kill several people to even qualify for lawn mowing, so... I don't know, maybe the, the desired qualifications for a number of jobs in this universe is just insanely high. We also learned all together that, um... Oh wait, we've got treasure here, never mind. That trees are made of wood, because I had somehow managed to forget that. Oh, hold on, there we go. You feel a slight vibration when you're directly over a treasure. MC says, well, if you use a lawnmower in a different way, that's right, Dead Rising style. <laughs> Sometimes the positioning is very exact. Are, are we doing this right? Okay, I can feel it, but where is it? I can feel the controller pulsing. Just don't for the life of me know what it's trying to lead me to. Am I supposed to stab the tree? No, let's let's try it on one of these others out here in the field. As he said, not everyone survived their tractor either. God, no. And Eclipse says, that's an interesting business acumen. You want the job? Assassinate my neighbor. He's <laughs> playing loud music past ten. There we go. We can dig up little parcels of cash, and I want to say a couple Lovikov balls as well. Uh, this way. So it's just a nice way to get a little bit of extra income, which we're going to need. Believe you me, some of these uh, later contracts can become pricey as hell. Just because I'm stubborn and never learn my lesson. We got the other one first try. I don't even know what. Yeah, never mind. On with the show. All we've got to do is stun and then finish people using uh, wrestling moves. Whoa, hold up. Ton of treasure here. Grandpa Ferguson's famous dog food burritos. I see. Very good. This, this is a business model that I'm certain is lucrative. There we go. Alright, uh, take care, MC. Thank you so much for joining us. Always good to see you. Huh? We've got more shirts, let's have a look-see. Just some kind of white graphic tee, not really my thing. Whoa. Money, much more up my alley. Or down this alley, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> yep. Ah, uh, another new shirt. Sweet. Oh, that's a damn sight better. It features the ever-popular, um, like, superhero, uh, action star, Destroy Man. Let's call in the bike, and then head to our destination. Travis! Hello, completely unanimated character model. Oh no, there we go. There's a way to get this sucker to turn on a dime, I just don't remember what it is. Or I don't know how it would translate to- Oop. 
what we're working with right now on the Switch. Which, again, I must say, uh, especially compared to something like Mario Galaxy, the Wii controls uh, have been ported for Switch quite expertly. This is a really solid port. I want to say we'll probably be keeping our current wardrobe consistent throughout the game, except once we reach a point that allows us to get, like, I want to say there's a purple, uh, purple jacket. Is that the Subaki? I believe so. We do have it equipped, don't we? Yes. So all we've got to do is finish as many of these suckers off with wrestling moves as we possibly can in time. And as soon as we land the suplex, they will just automatically fold. Now the difficulty there, of course, is going to be in stunning. Now notice we're getting money per kill in addition to the money that they naturally drop as just regular enemies that we defeat. There we go. This is an excellent way to earn a great deal of money in a relatively short span of time. I'm just amazed that anybody was left on the baseball team after the last chapter. Apologies if you hear the neighbor's dogs, they're doing what they do best. Being very displeased that they live in a relatively small apartment. Let's see. Overhead and down. Oh, that's nice. Oh, next round respawning from the dugouts. Oh, almost got him. Fortunately, our charged melee attacks have a very respectable range on them. Overhead and down. Nice. Overhead and down. Oh yeah, and if we press the uh, lock on button at precisely the time certain enemy attacks comes in, we can deflect them. It's not super useful, but it's a nice capability to have in our toolkit. Oh, we got them all. Does that mean a gold medal for old Brady? Come on now. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. And 45k. That's not bad, but we're gonna need considerably more to unlock the uh, boss fight. Yeah, almost 100k more. Jeez. Those upgrades are essential, but they do not come cheap. See a Lovikov ball over there, so you know what that means. Gotta get our hands on it. The third stage is also super short, but it concludes in, again, that notorious boss battle. Wait, we might actually need Spiel Tiger for this one. Hold on. Oh, if only we could run faster somehow. I'm actually very glad they just removed the open world entirely from subsequent titles. It, uh, it didn't really add a lot to the formula. It made more sense just dividing the team's time between, uh, like, the activities you have to perform in order to upgrade your character, and then the extremely... Jesus Christ. Well-crafted, um, I guess we'll have to come back for that one, maybe. Uh, boss stages. Or maybe we can go all the way around? Yes, yes we can. I guess this is what happens when you decide you have an open world without asking why do we have the open world. What says a nice motorcycle? Oh yeah, the Spieltage is great. Um... It receives considerably more attention in the sequel, where it's really useful inside of a couple actual story chapters. The 
Apocalypse says, why is open world? Yeah, I have I've no idea in this case. They were planning on doing much more with it, and just ran out of time or budget or both. So I can respect that. But... Lovikov Ball, there we go. It's just that point-to-point -point traversal takes an inordinately long amount of time, given what we're competing for. Who is open world? Uh, that would be Ubisoft, my friend. Huh? Another trash shirt? Yeah, just a straight-up black tee. I'm alright with that. Yes. Now just a straight-up white tee. Less fine with that. Yes. I promise all of these Lovikov balls will pay off. It'll just take a little while. I was sincerely hoping that one of those dumpsters would have some cash inside, but... Speaking of, to those of you who follow our ever-expanding journey into the lore of Houston-based Viper, uh, a rapper Viper, I was going to say Viper Rapper, but no, that's how he bills himself. Um, I did find something of a hidden gem within his voluminous discography that isn't just a painful attempt to uh, extend the meme or um, play on his cult status as a very poor musician. It's, um... I believe it's called You Can Never Stop Me From Snowburden, yes. or something of that nature. Sweet. It's been released on Viper albums under about ten different titles. Uh, just shy of five minutes long, it's a title, or it's a track that features Viper singing and rapping, and doing both with a shocking measure of competence. I don't want to say, like, actual top-notch talent, but, I mean, he proves himself to be a perfectly dexterous singer with his, like, syrupy dirge of a voice. And, uh, his verses are surprisingly eloquent with a simple but coherently developed and delivered message. Um, it's, it is actually, dare I say it, kind of a good song. It's about how he has enough money and wealth and luxury to a uh, snowbird, which refers to a practice in the States of people who uh, move to a uh, colder climate, so like up north, during uh, the hotter seasons and vice versa, so the people who have enough expendable income to do that. Um, and apparently he can snowbird because he's a jousting champion or something? So it's, it's still got trademark Viper weirdness, but it's also a pretty good song. Eclipse says maybe Viper was just really high that day. <laughs> Perhaps. I mean, I don't think there's many days when that hasn't been able to describe him, but you're right. Sorry, what is this M on the, uh, overworld? The clip says, so he, uh, migrates using the money from his jousting. Where's he from? The 1200s? Well, you know, a few years back, as part of a television program, and there's not just one place that did it, there were several, but the U.S. actually tried to bring professional competitive level jousting back. There's a series all about it called Full Metal Jousting. It was pretty, pretty damn good, I have to say. Uh, but one of the hooks, or I believe the, uh, the league fell out of favor when a competitor, like, impaled another through the shoulder, as, as happens when one jousts. Oh, I forgot about these. These are totally optional side missions that give you, uh, quite a bit of money. Yes. We've got enough Lovica balls for two skills once we unlock the way to use them. Free fight missions. Kill till we take a single hit. Oh, no. This is gonna take me a few tries. I am bad at these. I am so bad at these. Hey, he's over here! Notice that the Tsumbaki is heavily based or rather heavily dependent upon uh, physical blows or stun enemies. That was like the standard, um. That was the standard heavy attack chain. Then features blows that will stun the enemy. Very nice. Next. 
Oh god. Oh shit, he, he hit me. Damn it. But we were doing pretty good. Let's let's just keep trying. Because when we clear these guys, we get a ton of money. Like a ton of money. It is it is worth it. Eclipse says, wow, that is a lot of blood. Yeah, if you're if you're squeamish, this is not the game for you. Emphasizing uh, stuns is just extremely fast, relatively speaking. There we go. Oh shit! Just a little slow on the uptake there. Eclipse asks, is everyone in this game's mother a ketchup packet? Man, I've... Given some of the weird things that go on in this world, I would not be surprised. So, given that Brady's pretty bad at this game, these missions are a little tough for me, but the payout is more than worth it. Bean Katana models in this game. Well, by tons, I mean like four or five, but uh, they're all very interesting. One of them is just straight up a light thing. Alright, what's next? Oh god, one of them actually has a Bean Katana. Oh no. Are you messing with me? Are you messing with me? Oh, 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 I don't even care what metal rank we get, I'm just glad we did it. 10 enemies down, 35k. Oh, gold rank. Shoot, alright. Thanks, Eclipse. I appreciate that, man. These these get really hard as the game goes on. But, I mean, 35k. That's uh, gonna put us well on our way to uh, affording the next boss fight. Which is also, again, I must emphasize, for those of you who have just joined us, or joined us since um, we cleared the last chapter, considered by most to be the hardest boss fight in the game. So there's that. Okay, this is going to put us back, or no, just uh, in this disused uh, freight yard. All right, we can, we can throw down here. Oh, and it's against heavy metal security again. Death metal, excuse me. Now check out how much damage we deal to these guys at this point. Oh, 
Oh. oh shit! <laughs> Those charge attacks take just a little too long. If Whip says, you know, maybe assassinating is a lucrative business. The streets are so empty in a world where you could technically say, well, my neighbor sucks, dude, here's some cash. Yes, yes, that's true. And the assassins also spend a great deal of their time fighting each other, so it's a very, very violent world. When the entire pro baseball team is apparently trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, you you know you've got a problem. Whoa, two attacks. That is what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, glitched out the animations there, but we good. I have to say, that couldn't possibly be all. Oh god. Oh shit! I... That's the biggest problem I will have with these moving forward, as you'll see. Enemies just spawning behind me. No More Heroes and No More Heroes 2 are great games, but their cameras or camera controls are not great. They weren't on the Wii and they're not here. They're not terrible or anything, just not as smooth as you'd like. Well, not just the camera, sorry, also the lock-on process. Clips has to die in one hit. I know how that feels. Just for these missions, fortunately. I'm I'm just getting the uh, the eclipse site sample ladder. All right. Well, the big guy with the axe was probably our our toughest target, right? I heard an enemy aggro. Yep, here he is. Fuck! <laughs> he just outranged me. Come on now. Oh, I guess when I'm up against the guys who have conventional weapons, the easiest thing to do would be just block their attacks. But I don't know if they can get around that. Eclipse says, you only ordered the taster menu. I fell asleep at the buffet table. Oof. An unpleasant experience in real life or at Dark Souls. How's that coming along, by the way? I'm always anxious to hear about your progress in that most benighted of runs. There we go. Now we've got Patrick, man. Who, fortunately, we can just kind of run down. There we go. Uh, he's a little more durable than our regular sword. Hey, there we go. How do these guys just have pipes? Yes. Good. Alright, just one more. Come here. And thanks for playing. Woo. That's what I'm talking about, kids. How much money? Probably not as much. 30k. I mean, that's healthy. Eclipse says, Freida rinsed me quite a bit. I was planning on just finishing up the DLC, but that fight might be a bit more involved than some of the others I have left. It's long with difficult stuff happening at each, or different stuff happening at each stage. Yes, yes, especially the, the second. 
Uh, might have more cracks at Gale. And, uh, thank you, Eclipse. I appreciate the praise, as ever. Um... I, uh... I would definitely say either Gale or Midir would be your next easiest boss, based on what I remember about your run. Midir, if you use the strategy that makes him way more manageable, the same strategy that I used, would actually probably be your next easiest. Given how talented you are at evasion, I'd say you'd have an easier time with him than with, uh... than with Gale. Or the Nameless King and friends. Let's just, uh... Pick up another nice new shirt out the trash. Yeah, that fits, Travis. And take this party on back. Through the trees, which I now have a probably unhealthy vendetta against. To the, uh... To the Assassination Bureau. Eclipse says, the invisibility in the Freida fight is just really annoying when one hit makes you go dead. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Though keep in mind, that, uh... That also holds true even if you don't have a, a low vitality build. Oh. She deals, frankly, absurd amounts of damage in the last phase. Maya says Brady won't last until every last palm tree is gone. That's right, until all evidence of my mistake is scoured from the world. Were they made of wood? I don't know. You find one and tell me. Clip says, no more heroes. The palm trees are the heroes. I kind of like the design of the receptionist here. I like the, uh, like, streak of black, almost like oil paint she has across her face. Oh, this one here. Um, it's the destruction derby. Or the, the batting home run derby. And you saw how good I was at that during Dr. Peace's stage. You also saw how good I was at articulating what it is just now. This bodes extremely well for our prospects in the immediate future. Eclipse says, looks like a burn, like someone shoved a bean katana in her face. Oh no no, trust me, we see what bean katanas can do, like, in non-gameplay related, uh, or non-gameplay focus sections a bit later on. You would not be able to survive that. It's not even like a lightsaber where it can scorch you. These things are extremely destructive, as is everything in the aptly named town of Santa Destroy. Still a better open world than cyberpunks. All right. Not gonna make a lot of money from this because I'm not very good at it, but we'll we'll do our best. We don't need a lot of money either. Okay, that's three down. We're getting some. <laughs> oh. Alright. Well, that'll be enough to get us the fight. That's gonna be a silver, I'd imagine. Probably 8 out of 10. 7 out of 10. Yeah. Alright. For a task I'm not extremely proficient at, I will be more than happy to accept that. And yes, we've earned just enough to unlock the next fight. Um, which we will actually do next time. I'm sorry friends, we're going to have to leave it here. This is the closest to a natural stopping point we've reached that wouldn't be after, you know, uh, a boss battle. And just take old Brady's word for it. The next one might take us a little while. Um... The bosses and the stages only get more elaborate and interesting from here. So, oh, thank you, Eclipse. I appreciate it, man. 
Until next time, thank you all so, so much for joining us this evening. Really quickly, I'd like to remind you all, if you would so care to, you can check out our podcast, hosted by myself, Seth the Overwitch and Comrade Potato, on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or iTunes, the platform of your choice. Every week, we tackle serious and silly topics surrounding gaming as a culture and an industry. Um, and we would greatly appreciate your patronage. Um, until next time, thank you all so much for joining me, whether you've been live with us here in Twitch chat or you're catching this after the fact as a video on demand over at youtube.com. Know how much I appreciate you all. Um, until next time, which should ideally be in a day or two, take care, folks. Bye-bye.